Uh, I'm starting to feel like it, it really did feel like whoever designed the Marcy hero was like a League of Legends player who just like happens to work on Dota because they just like it's a better job to just be frank. And they're like, <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> they're just like, I wonder if they'll let me just add a League hero to this game. Uh, and we you know they did. Imagine getting to choose between working for Valve and Riot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a that's a real big energy play right there. Uh, anyway, back on topic. Riot's never gonna hire me for anything ever. Uh, True. Oracle picked up here. You got your character to better answer. Uh, both teams have a hard to spell now. Well, uh, hard to spell in the form of the Oracle Ultimate, but uh, soft to spell on uh, the Q. So being able to get out the Venomous Gale, being able to prevent a lot of the damage uh, from that and the Snap Fire. Huge saves coming up from the Oracle this game. Um, and the pick Lena, which is likely going to be played mid. This one was nerfed again, by the way. Uh, the BKB Lena build and Lena being played in the mid, which just got so popular that they ended up uh, nerfing the damage on her level 10 talent down by 5 to 25 to, uh, sorry, 30 to 25. And the attack speed on uh, Fiery Soul. They also nerfed the cooldown on Dragon Soul. Or Dragon Slave. Dragon, Dragon Slave, Slave's yeah. cooldown was increased by one second as well. So, I mean, what we saw previously with the change to Light Striker Ray is the fact that you can't stack Light Striker Ray, you know, for it like infinite, uh, or like for you know continuously keeping Fiery Soul up. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just makes sense. The the that extra second uh, makes it that much more difficult to get those Fiery Soul stacks up. So, mm -hmm. makes no, sense. I like what they. Yeah, I like what they've done here. We talked about this with Panda Boo in one of the post-game interviews, that uh, Abaddon does such an amazing job at letting Leshrac get in the middle of the fights. Yeah. Uh, so it makes sense that they grab that here. I think we talked seconds. about that with him in BTS Pro Series 8. Yeah, that was um, correct. Yeah, the two Five of them just uh, play around eight. each other super well. They didn't have any frontline initiators at this point. Um, <clears throat> they could run either the Abaddon or the Venomancer as position... It is uh, well, they'll have to run one of these heroes position three, probably the Venomancer. In that case, they're going to need a uh, position one that can be a bit of a frontliner. Morphling in the late game can get right in there without that many problems, but I'm thinking more along the lines of something like a uh, a Sven or you could even try to steal something from Numa's book and run a Magnus as position one. But they I think they'll take a, a strength hero uh, to be the position one here on Thunder Predator, and they'll just play very fast and try to take towers as early as possible. Uh, I actually got a quote from Pandaboo before the game as well. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I got to talk to both teams. Well, uh, Pandaboo is not even... Ten seconds. Well, okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah, Go ahead. This is Thunder Predator. Yeah, yeah. You get mi mixed up with the old Thunder Predator. You're like the viewers, Ricky. No, no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't that. I, I was thinking Papa Tutti for some reason, uh, <laughs> who is like no longer on D2 Hustlers. Yeah. No, uh, on Thunder Predator, Pandaboo. Uh, he just said, I just want to... No, sorry. The, the exact quote. I want to go sleep. <laughs> Dude, what the heck, man? Oh, my God. That's a good quote, though. That's a really good yeah. quote. We'll, we'll hear about that one in the now, future. No, I did ask for his explicit permission to share. I said, any thoughts on the match for me to share before I start? <laughs> I want to go sleep. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, you know, it was Halloween last night. A lot of these people were out pretty late. Uh, I know Pandaboo, he's probably a real cool Five dude. He was out late uh, partying with his friends. Man, you know must, be nice. uh, must be nice. Must be nice. I went to watch Dune last night. I saw it. I actually went uh, Halloween morning. First showing of the day in IMAX. Went and saw Dune. So good. Yeah, uh, we're not going to spoil anything, though. We wouldn't do that here mm -mm. with the, uh, the good guy casters. Yeah, absolutely. Shadow Demon pick here for D2 Hustlers gives them a very defensive heavy lineup here. Oracle and Shadow Demon? Do you think that's necessary? Yeah. Ten seconds remain. Uh, I don't think that they're going to have enough damage. That's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll have the hard dispel for, to, to drop on the Lesher, actually. So you're going to struggle to keep him alive uh, if he goes in the middle of these team fights. It somewhat limits, uh, you know, your carry potential here. But they end up going for the Phantom Assassin. All right, if you end up getting a break off on a PA... With the Shadow Demon later this game, uh, you're in great shape, but uh, it's going to be tricky to get the jump on a Phantom Assassin. Like, Flea is going to be the number one target for this PA in every single fight here, so he's going to have a lot of work cut out for him. I don't think you have an amazing front line on D2 Hustlers. Monster has a lot of work cut out for him, and your entire team is going to melt this Phantom Assassin as the game goes on. Now, it didn't see that much play at TI, but 
all the carries that were super popular at the international were nerfed. That makes Phantom Assassin a little bit stronger, um, which is because of those nerfs in yeah. the grand scheme of things. So I would have preferred to see a frontliner mid, uh, but it looks like Dark Mega is going to be the side character this game, and Phantom Assassin is the protagonist here, so to speak. I mean, we've seen Dark Mago take this uh, Lashrak before and have a lot of success on it. So it's it's not that um, unorthodox, especially with Pandabu on the Abaddon having those saves. The one thing though that's that is interesting is like you said, having the break onto the Phantom Assassin. Like Shadow Demon will definitely go for an Aghanim Scepter in a situation like this. Uh, like you, you kind of put yourself in a weird spot uh, as Angel, but. We talked about this earlier. If he gets a good start to the game, which it's a pretty easy lane for the Phantom Assassin here, you're going against Shadow Demon Pango. It's not that rough. So, I, I don't yeah. know. We'll see. If Angel can get ahead, he will, uh, like you said, become the real protagonist of the story here. Mm -hmm. We have to refer to everything in anime terms now. You know, that we've got uh, anime characters being added. Lena also being added to the anime. Uh, if you saw that trailer for the second season of Dota 2, dragon's blood did you uh i did mm. yeah i'm surprised they nerfed her they'll probably buff her just before uh like the actual anime comes out everyone is gonna want to be lena but i'll actually be lena i've got the most lena energy see i'm i'm really excited for you know the anime is gonna come out and lena is gonna look like slightly different and they'll just like give her a persona for some reason a new like she already has a an arcana but it's the oldest arcana a lot of people are asking it to be reworked and have been for some time maybe that would be the change that we really need no it's just, just, just reworking the of the lena arcana i mean I they'll sell a bunch of it if they rework like the oldest one Absolutely. Everyone will go, oh god i want this now even though i think a lot of copies of it exist in the game and on the marketplace <laughs> Maybe I'll rant everyone. Uh, start stockpiling your Lena Arcanus now. You heard it here first. This is a good theory that me and you have worked up. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Valve wouldn't do that, though, because then it sets a precedent of them being like, we need to rework old Arcanus. <laughs> and that <laughs> is not something they're going to be stoked on. They'd rather just make a new one. They might actually just like make a new Lena Arcana and be like, yeah, we're just going to sell a new one. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's also gonna be paywalled in a battle pass for 180 dollars come on man <laughs> <laughs> i mean what <laughs> did i say that <laughs> that'd be rough uh you know i'm just happy that i have my rubric arcana an earth spirit arcana would be nice as well little pill hero i need to buy his taunt this taunt is buyable right he has a taunt yeah, he like rides his staff. Mm. Like a surfboard. Yeah. I think it's like viable. In the movie the Surf Ninjas. I'm sorry, what? Surf Ninjas? Hmm. Okay. Oh, we'll watch together after we're done casting tonight. Must be a really uh, obscure anime, I'm sure, right? No, it's, it's a actual movie that they made. <laughs> oh. Damn. <laughs> All right. Anyway, back on topic of the game. Uh, let's talk mid lane matchup here. Now, this is something that uh, Monster was worried about, just Dark Mago having a good game. Uh, our theory is that he's going to be the side character here, though. I think he'll probably focus on pushing down the mid tower and uh, getting map control as early as possible rather than moving the jungle and farming. So we're probably going to see a Diabolic Edict uh, two points into it by level six. But right now, he's just on the 1-0-1. One, one. That's the most common for getting yourself CS. Lina's laning face is a lot weaker than it used to uh, be, though, just due to the fact that the Dragon Slave and the Light Strike Rate cooldowns were increased, and your movement speed uh, stacks were decreased on Fiery Soul, so Ooh. running people down is a little bit harder. Unlucky for Flea there. He went for a, like a, a, you know, a wraparound pole top lane, and mm -hmm. uh, Creeps lost sight of him, so he's just... It will help doubles, double wave a little bit, but yeah, not an ideal pull. No. I mean, he's still getting used to the uh, position five, right? And he's just gotten started with this team, so there's bound to be a couple mistakes. Well, yeah. And uh, fights that are unlucky. But uh, again, I'm not sure any of these changes on the teams are going to be permanent at the moment. I think people are just looking for something to play in and uh, checking their prospect before the next DPC season. Yeah, absolutely. 
You know, people want to do something new, shake it up a little bit. I mean, we see, we're seeing Sammy Boy on position four. If you had told me Sammy was going to be playing four in a tournament this year, I'd, uh, I'd laugh at you. Mid lane esque though. He's all right. He's getting uh, harassed a little bit. Nice fairy fire usage there. It has the bottle coming out as we speak, but Dark Mango just got his liver. He goes down! The creep finished him off! Oh no, he's playing that so close there. He just about survived. He had just gotten his bottle too. He had two charges left on his bottle as he went down there. <laughs> if he could have gotten it off just after the uh, like uh, the lightning hit oh, him, he would have survived. 11 damage from a melee creep killed him. Just under the tower. Well, that was that had to have been like a high roll on the melee creep. It was 11 damage. Yeah. So it was. Oh, uh, no, that feels bad. You can't give Dark Mago these kinds of advantages. And Flea, he comes in mid to uh, get rid of the Observer Ward, but the damage is done here. Well, he's still got one on the other side. Like, there's still an OBS ward on the right side of the lane. Yeah, and they've got no idea, so he's going to think that he's safe uh, up on the high ground here. Really, they have vision of him, so he's going to be able to pull these same tricks, except uh, without the knowledge of Ask at the moment. One thing that's really interesting here, maybe I can understand the Shadow Demon pick in terms of laning against the Abaddon, because he can't go for points in, a, in Curse, right? <laughs> So that por that point's kind of uh, annoying, but I don't think Pandaboo really cares all that much. Like, he just wants to max the Aphotic Shield, play aggressive here with Angel. And speaking of which, they're looking to get on top of Monster here. Pandaboo, two stacks though, will be fine, has the stick. Yep. All right, he's going to be just, uh, he's going to be okay. I mean, kind of annoying that you're not going to be able to harass this lane the same way that you would some other offlaners. Uh... Like, give a lot of armor here on uh, Angel being an agility hero, and Monster and uh, Flea are both going to try to trade with a lot of time right click damage, and you're going to be able to negate, like, any kill potential here. Well, Monster's not going to be able to negate this. No, I mean, the, go this was really good timing here by Angel. They just delivered an Orb of Corrosion and the finished Swan. Oh, he gets oh, the Disarm? But that's not going to be enough. No way. Yeah, that's the kill. Going away the PA. That Orb of Corrosion, man, that no. timing was so smart. Flea missed. He hit him. He missed with that last shadow poison there. He would have been able to. Uh, it would have been close. He might have been able to finish off Angel there, but he had uh, Angel walked behind him uh, when he threw out the shadow poison uh, towards his tower there. So he got the dodge off and didn't go down to the shadow poison because of that. Matthews uh, aware of a ward in the mid lane now and actually saves the second water rune. So Dark Mago able to get both as a result. Hmm. Not bad. Yeah, ask really struggling here. Yeah. Already down 500 uh, net worth. It was 400 after you died there, so he hasn't managed to even things out at all after. And he's just gonna get run down here. Oh, very nice light trick away. Dark Mega wasn't able to dodge it out, but he's gonna try to run him down anyway. Yeah, he doesn't really care. He's trying to rotate on over, find him with Divai Lama, but not in time. And he does get the return kill. So Divai Lama, a lot of XP going his way, plus the wave under the tower. I mean, Divai Lama is the carry now, I guess. <laughs> I mean, if if you lost this completely, no one was able to teleport, nobody's able to get killed on Leshrac, the game becomes extremely difficult. At the very least, Oracle's going to get this, but you're now almost level 7 on the Leshrac, and Lina has just hit level 5. Yeah. So you lost, uh, you went down there, you gave up a kill to the enemy mid, and you missed that huge creep wave that was pushing underneath the tower. Yeah, it's feeling bad to be a Lina in this game. And, uh, you know, I think these nerfs, they do kind of add up here. Like, uh, it's not just the Fiery Soul nerf, not just the Dragon Sleep nerf, but also have to keep in mind uh, the talent. Uh, five less damage and uh, less movement speed and, you know, less Fiery Soul or Dragon Slaves that you're throwing out uh, really does make a difference. You must scouting out the jungle right now, by the way. That's a big stack. Uh, yeah. But they scout out Dark Mago instead. No level six on S yet, and it might actually be the reason he lives. Nice cookie and a Fodic Shield flee with a disruption, but there's no damage left. I mean, you need this Lina to have that Laguna Blade available, and this is exactly why. Yeah. And here's Matthew, the medic crew. Ends up giving him a uh, self. Clarities him and they clear up the stack because they know the enemies have scouted this one out. Yeah, I mean it would have been cool if he could save that one for uh, the Phantom Assassin having a battle theory, but I think they were planning on giving this up to Dark Mago uh, anyways. Things are miss a little bit slower than you'd want to be on Phantom Assassin, and 
she went orb with Grosh and tried to harass Monster out of the lane rather than going straight Battle Fury. Absolutely. I mean, Lashrak does a lot with this early momentum, right? He takes towers. Yeah. He's going to open up that map for the Phantom Assassin, which in turn will give her the, ex the you know, that amount of golden XP in a different way. Exactly. Oh, man. Continuing to stack the Ancient over here. I don't think Dark Mage would be able to clear that one out. He finds himself with Chip Vest. He's probably going to look to start pushing towers pretty soon. He's now got three points in the Diabolic Edict. I thought he'd go... Uh... Like one, uh, one, four, two, or something like that. But he ended up putting two points in the split earth, which he hasn't really gotten used too much yet, but it gives him a little bit more kill potential. So, uh -huh. again, uh, bottom lane is probably going to be his target next. Matthew's going to hold the mid lane. Yep, that's exactly where he's going. Good call, now. Oh. Yeah. It's you a know, smart rotation. Uh, Oscar is level six now. He's got these three points in the Plague Wards. All he has to do is just hit someone with that stun. And there it is. Catches the Oracle. Burn him down with the Edict. That magic immunity does not save you against that pure damage now. Yeah. I mean, it was physical before, so it wouldn't matter. But you know what I'm getting at. Yeah, pure is still uh, very scary. And with that kill, Oracle not able to be here to save Yuma if they go for the dive. But it's going to be a slow death for this tower, typically as Venomancers do. Yeah, and uh, again, Dark Mago just trying to maximize his farm. He goes over to the, uh, pulls the creep into the hard camp, throws someone down, and they give up. He's just going to leave Oscar here by himself. Yeah, there's a regen rune top. Yep, and there's also action over here. Flea, he's going to go down here. In fact, he just, he wants to walk down the hill because he, is this going to work? It does. He, wants he didn't to want to reveal that the stack was there. <laughs> oh my gosh. And Flea Esk was in the there. process of killing them too. Yeah. So smart. What a, what a gamer Flea is. <laughs> he, if he, he walks up that hill. They see the stacks. They take those as well. So he's going to be getting the losses. No Eskins to farm that instead. What a... Oh, pick it up, Flea. Flea stocks. Going through the roof. The funny... You know, back when I used to play Dota 1, you know, we had a cardinal rule, which was uh, don't bring that over here. And uh, Flea... <laughs> What a gamer, dude. <laughs> he did not bring that over here. Matthew mid lane. Oh, Boundless Strike a little off the mark there, but they still get the kill. Yeah. It's like they uh, say, fear is the mind killer. A tithe to the impurities. A little bit of uh, Dune for you. Dyer's top tower I like that movie. Dangerous. It was quite good. I'm going to watch it again. I probably will. Uh, I'll watch it with my dad or something. I'm watching it with my roommate and other friend last night. <laughs> Great dad movie. <laughs> Great dad movie, you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Dads love sci-fi. All right, mid tower goes down, the big one, as they've already lost bottom to the Venomancer, so... A huge tower advantage already going here for the side of Thunder Predator. Monster doing he can to push top lane, but you just don't have that pressure on the Pango. Yeah, I mean, you can clear the wave with your shield crash, but it's a lot slower than, uh, say, Hand of Assassin, Snapfire, Flesh Rack. I mean, look at the tools that they have. They've got Diabolic Edict, Little Shredder, uh, Wards, and not to mention uh, Curse of uh, Vernus. Well, they don't have Curse of Avernus, <laughs> but when they do, those towers will melt even quicker. Dark Mago's looking for somewhere. monster. He got an invis. Yeah. He knows that he cut the tree here, so he's gonna know that he's somewhere in the trees, but I'm not sure how much time Dark Mago's gonna be willing to waste. Oh, he, see, he found he another cut path. tree. Uh-oh, does he find? Okay, well, we got baited a little bit. Yeah, we did. Bottom lane, <laughs> Angel goes down to the rotation of Esk and Yuma. Dark Mago TPing out though, looking to get on top of the Monkey King, return the favor, trading one for one. Llama makes it in range. That's gonna be the Wukong's command. Can they turn this around is the real question. Dark Mago now just chasing after Esk and he just melts him. No problem at all. Oracle now. All alone, 1v3. You ain't getting out of this one. Yeah, at the very least, they managed to keep the Monkey King alive, but great priority targeting there by uh, Dark Mago, realizing, okay, I'm not gonna be able to sit inside this Wukong's command. If Lena walks away, I'm gonna get on top of her. And uh, they end up losing Flea elsewhere on the map. Probably didn't figure the Phantom Assassin would be on top of them there. Instead, they probably thought, okay, if Monster's pushing out top, that's where the PA is going to be next. But uh, they just let Monster do what he wants up there. They don't consider this guy a threat. And for the moment, he isn't. I mean, all he's got is, is uh, Ring of Pallet. I think he's working on uh, the Blink Dagger. Orb eventually. Dyer's but yeah, Blink Dagger right now. 
Like, this guy does not have items at the moment. His net worth is fairly low. If you let him do well, like, it doesn't really matter. He's going to be using his Rolling Thunder in the team fights anyways, and he's past the point where he can get himself an early Diffusal Blade or an early Maelstrom to do tons of damage. So, just picking their priorities uh, very well right now in Thunder Predator. Yeah, you're right. It's pretty much the same build for the Lina. The boots of travel into the BKB. Nothing has really changed there. And then you have, you know, Dark Mago, who I'm imagining is going to pick up a BKB eventually. But going for the Yule Scepter first. So he's going to be really fast. Boots of travel. The Windlace already competed on his way to that Yule's. And he's almost got it. Right now, you're about two minutes behind where you want to be on the Lina, though. You usually want to hit, like, uh, the 5k net worth mark uh, just due to your, like, huge farming abilities by the 10-minute the mark. But at the moment, Esk, uh, really struggling, only has the boost of travel. So you can kind of keep waves shoved pretty easily. And right now, uh, you are going to struggle to take uh, the tier 2 towers. Uh, you'd be pushing a little bit too far in, especially with all these saves that uh, D2 Hustlers have. But... I think D2 Hustlers is happy to just buy their time, use the little bit of extra map control they have, farm up both jungles, get Phantom Assassin or items, because uh, we talked about this during the, the draft, right? This PA is going to be amazing at jumping the heroes on D2 Hustlers. So they're not going to push their luck. They're not going to try to take the tier two towers at the moment. They'll let them have their defensive heroes and they'll take control of this map. They're up 3k net worth right now, but we'll probably slowly see this increase over the next couple of minutes without that many kills happening. They're actually looking to go on Dark Mago, but the smoke pretty much failed here from Black and Yellow as Pandaboo just walks up and pops it, so... <laughs> Nothing you can really do to go to, to stomp that. You don't want to be going on the uh, bad end. And this is what, one of the things we're talking about. They they lack a lot of damage between this Shadow Demon and this Oracle. Like, two very defensive supports. Yes, you have Demonic Purge, but... Doesn't feel that impactful. Monster now smoking up that he gets his Blink Dagger delivered. So this is a pretty big jump in teamfight potential. But again, it's just Pandabu positioning himself in between himself and the enemy team. There's going to be the Purge catching the Snapfire. Rolling Thunder coming through. They should be able to take him down here eventually as he is all alone. They get the first kill. The question is, can they find more? Monster ping playing ping pong for the moment. Mode Pig activated, looking for Dark Mago. He gets a split Earth onto the Monkey King. They've got to be able to save him. Divine Llama's not close enough, but they melt him with Esk. Now Oracle able to keep himself alive. In comes the Poison Nova from the Venomancer. A nice two-man and snare. Pandaboo trying to get away, but they got their eyes set on the Veno. Falling low, getting pelted here by Esk. Stun on the mark. They end up taking down three. No casualties here for the side of D2 Hustlers. Well, maybe. Yuma and Divine Lama, that's just poison over. They're going to be fine. Yep. Non-lethal. So they managed to survive that one. The big kill there was a last rack. The other ones I wouldn't say mattered too much, but kind of not exactly what I thought would happen. I think they'd hold their ground and not try to invade uh, the enemy triangle or anything like that. So with all the save they have, it is too difficult to finish. I don't need these people off, but at the very least, Phantom Assassin still sitting at the top of the net worth and continues to farm up. Has the Battle Fury done and... I mean, uh, that is a huge story, XP change, too. Yeah, I mean, I would say that it doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things, but I expected a team like uh, Thunder Predator to have a little bit more self-control than to go for something like that. I think invading the enemy territory was a little bit ambitious with all these uh, saves. Look you at want your, a much bigger net with advantage. Look at your XP graph right now. It actually favors D2 Hustlers after that fight. A pretty drastic swing on the graph. Gold... You know, still slightly in favor of uh, Thunder Predator here, just about a 1,000, but I mean, those fights matter. Lina is basically tied with this uh, Lashrak, where Dark Mago, he's had a sizable gold lead on him this whole game, but just a little bit out of position, gets caught out first to start the the fight, and that is just the worst thing you can do. Lashrak's your, your primary damage in these fights. Yeah. It is going to be kind of tricky to keep him alive, though, because again, uh, any... If uh, Flea managed to get on top of him with the Demonic Purge, like your Phonic Shield is going to be spelled instantly here. You're moving very Smoke slowly. comes out. They're looking for him. Yuma, they don't end up finding the right tree, though. Doesn't get cut, and instead they just turn it around. Dark Vega goes down twice in a row now. Nice disruption there onto Matthew. He doesn't have that cookie, but he's got a pig. <laughs> Coming in with the backside, Pang. Okay, this is a cool interaction. Sign me up for more of that, baby. I'm ready to go. Monster, 
able to blink out. They will grab two more kills. <laughs> I want to see more pig pole rolling thunder. That is something I didn't know existed. Uh, your movement speed is set when you activate yeah. pig pole, though. So <laughs> it was purely for the looks there. You mean when you activate rolling thunder? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your movement speed is locked to... Uh... You like just don't expect the pig, though, dude. You just see yeah. this cute little pig, and suddenly it just destroys you, does damage, throws you into the air, and it's just rampaging back at you a second later, you know? That's fair. <laughs> Dark Mago is trying to push bottom lane, uh, punish them for all sitting at the top, and nobody's going to move uh, down here to defend it, it looks like, so I'm just going to be forced to give this one up. The catapult is going to allow him to take this one even faster, but... He doesn't feel extremely confident with people off that. You can see them all in the top lane now. Yeah, they're trading towers here for sure. The Radiant didn't... Uh, I don't know if they had a ward that got dewarded down here. I don't know if they saw Thunder Predator rotating out. But again, they get the tower. Goes away of Oscar here. A trade for both tier twos. Top lane though, or rather top side of the map, does favor D2 Hustles here as they have the Roche position. Looking at the wards here, this coverage, it gives them complete eyesight on anyone that would want to make a play for this Roche or contest it. So they're in a really good spot here on D2 Hustlers. Scores yeah. eight to eight now. What the heck? Yeah. They even things out and with uh, some over aggressive plays from uh, Thunder Predator, but they're gonna move back over here. I mean, here's Unfortunate the thing. scan. Yeah. Oh, uh, and they get the Mortimer Kisses. They oh. try to use it to scout, and they do see Divine Llama with it. They don't know where anyone else is. This should make my life but easier. They put uh, Oscar in front, and uh, I was about to go off about how uh, D2 Oscars know this strategy very well, just putting uh, you know, the position 5 in front with the Abad, and if, if anybody jumps on them, uh, you just end up turning the fight around, or you let the position 5 die, and you have a lot of time to get information. Speaking of Abad, and... Goes for the outpost, gets grabbed by Flea, and they are rotating in. Great time with Boundless Strike. Gonna force that uh, borrowed time, and <laughs> in comes the pick. <laughs> I'm not gonna get over this, dude. That's so great. Oh, man. It does nothing, but it is so funny. It costs an extra 50 mana. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it now. It's mental damage, really. Uh, all right, that's fair. <laughs> I'm you always gotta consider the game. mental damage these types of things do. Yeah, but uh, the reason that they went on that one there on D2 Hustlers is uh, Dark Mega had just shown in the bottom lane, kind of shoved that one in and get a little bit extra gold. He's trying to work on his BKB because at the moment it's just all magical damage uh, blowing him up. Flee? He gets saved! That's not He's bad, and they're gonna be able to catch the Venomancer as well. Does get the Poison Nova, and Esk is a little bit separated here, able to jump back in, but Angel with his brand new BKB, Esk pops his, but it might just be a little bit too late. Cookie forward, he gets the kill. Two heroes dead, and they're looking for more, and Angel's gonna clean up big here, I think. Do they have the damn? Okay, simple, TP out. Didn't have any spells left, but that's the Roshan. He didn't scatter blast him. Or maybe it had just gotten off the I, Yeah, I it was either him. just off cooldown or he didn't have the range. Yeah. They do have BKB completed on the Monkey King here, but they, they managed to isolate really well in that fight. Rolling Thunder coming through. Big, Monster big, big, just big, wants big. to go yeah, into the base. <laughs> <laughs> Oink, dude. He's looking to get on top of these heroes and make space, but just has to blink out. They don't have anyone here able to reinitiate. And you must force to BKB thanks to the Mortimer's Kisses, which... That is not a great usage of your nine second BKB is Angel just continuing to work on the Roshan here. The minus armor stacking up and they're gonna get it. Yeah, nothing you can do once they pop the BKB on the Monkey King. So they're all forced to get back now. Great fight. And again, I'm not surprised. You do have a late game the further this goes on. It took a couple bad fights that you didn't necessarily have to on uh, Thunder Predator, but outside of that, like, you keep this pace, there's nothing they're going to be able to do. Nobody's going to out, uh, out carry this Phantom Assassin. And she is still so far ahead of this Monkey King. And they get, uh, what, 5k net worth advantage at the moment? Yeah, she's looking like very 13, strong. Yeah. So five minutes on this Aegis, um, and you just completed the BKB on uh, Dark Mago as well, so... They're going to be looking to take a fight pretty quickly here. I'm not sure if they'll wait for the bash on Angel. Why do you have to? You go on Monster here. You just end up popping his uh, swashbuckle there at the creep wave. Yeah. That is one of the dangers of using those abilities to farm aggressively. 
Just to, I guess kind of unfortunate that's where Angel happened to be as well. But they're smoking up now. Yeah, they're looking to play aggressive here. The BKB, or sorry, the uh, Basher is completed, flying out to the PA right now. And at that point, there is no way the Monkey can be able to stand his ground and fight the PA. Like, you are so far off an MKB or a Silver Edge at the moment. Yeah, currently has that eye of Scotty queued up. And Scotty's a great option here, but... Like you said, you do need an MKB or something along those lines. Yeah, and uh, without the BKB, you just don't have the damage. Oh, the Angel goes in, mind. gets the bash, Divai Lama goes down. PA, she's a little far forward, but the evasion but giving no her damage. all the health she needs. Yeah, they just don't have the damage. Uh, if she's in any real danger, she's going to pop the BKB as well. She gets to play oh. so aggressive here. Yuma, he gets stunned by that dagger, nearly goes down. Angel, though, just continuing to play super aggressively, does get the blink out, runs right into Monster. Boundless Strike is there. The Poison Nova separating the whole backside of this fight, and it's just going to be Monster up on the front side. Mortimer Kiss is coming in. Angel goes back in. Nice disruption save there, but they are taking so much damage, baiting spell after spell from D2 Hustlers. And they force the BKB, the Wukong's command, and they don't have to even worry. Yeah, they use so much there. They're going to be able to take this tier two, uh, right? I don't think they can go high ground just yet. I think they'll want to get a couple more items before doing that. I think instead they'll uh, push on the top lane and you know, try to get yourself like a 20k net with advantage. That was such a sick Poison Nova by Oscar. I mean, he just goes in. Yeah. Poison Nova's three heroes on the backside. Yeah, and, and at that point, you need to have the PA dead. If like uh, Poison Nova ends up hitting everybody, you can't continue that fight unless the Phantom Sash is gone, because then everybody gets picked off by uh, daggers and uh, like getting jumped on by the the Phantom Strike. But yeah, great positioning there by Oscar, and you know, without a blink dagger as well, he's going to be going for that uh, next after his uh, Lotus Orb that he's going for now. So one of the things here is it looks like their answer to the PA is just going to be the Lina. And I, I kind of like this. I don't think if you're a Monkey King here, you want to fight up against this uh, Phantom Assassin anyway. Like, you'd much rather drop a Wukong's Command and try and find kills on heroes like the Lashrak or the Venomancer or, you know... Um, you get the PA's team before yeah, you get the PA. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're, you're going to let the Lina deal with Phantom Sashin. She jumps forward, and she's not on the Lina. She's just going to try and blow her up. So, Vi Lama going for the <laughs> disarm DP, but Angel says no, pops the BKB. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of times, is it really worth it? Uh, letting the, uh, Is it really worth it popping the BKB there? Well, is it worth it letting uh, Divi Lama think you can get away with something like that? <laughs> like that. <not. laughs> Uh, Top lane scans. They're looking for Yuma. They know he's going deeper into the base, but they did. Uh, he did get quite a pretty. Oh, he didn't actually go for the tree dance cast range, which is normally the take here. I think on Monkey King, right? Uh, no. A lot of time people go Jingu Mastery. Really? Oh, all right. Yep. They have been 130. It doubles your damage on it. It is a lot of damage. Uh, but, you know, Tree Dance Cast Ranger was popular before they ended up buffing it. But I think with the, uh, like, the passive buffs to, to Tree Dance that you don't need to pick up an item shard anymore, it does become very good. You move around the map so quickly. Uh, but you're the position to won this game. You need to pump out damage. And even without the... I think even with it, they have damage problems. So he didn't really have an option here. Again, yeah, like, he has to be able to find these heroes like Lashrak, right? You can't... You can't really go on the Phantom Assassin, so there is a lot of pressure on Yuma here to find these heroes and, and try and solidify Quickly. these kills. Yeah. Oh, it just goes down. Nice timing here as D2 Hustlers, they're grouped up looking for him, but Angel, he's already TPing to the mid lane. And he ended up getting the Agnum Seven. All right, this is what I was talking about again uh, earlier. If Oscar gets off a good Poison Nova and Angel can kind of pick off these heroes that's sitting low HP or dropping to the Poison Nova, the cooldowns are going to reset every time after he gets a kill. So he's just going to be able to go one target to another after Oscar Poison Nova's everybody. It's yeah. going to be very cool. <laughs> Ags is one heck of an item, dude. It's so funny once you get the shard as well because you just spam Phantom Knives. Top lane, they're gonna look for Dark Mago. He gets the BKP off and Monsters, just looking for heroes on the backside, trying to throw Panda Boo and Matthew up into the air, but in comes Angel! He gets the crit, takes down Oracle, Flea trying to run away, big battle, the strike comes in, Lashrak, he needs help, they got the Demonic Purge. Ah, they did not. And instead, it's just Lina getting chased down here on the backside, bash after bash, Angel, target to target with an ultra kill. 
Yuma, get out of there. <laughs> He's just running. The only thing you can try to do now is cut the creep wave. I try to stop him from pushing the lanes in, but the creep wave is already at the tier one, uh, sorry, the tier two tower. Not to mention it's pushing into the mid lane. So there's two options they have here. Oracle's going to respawn, but he's not going to be able to do much. And yeah, Yuma already cutting the wave, but this isn't even going to matter. They're going to melt this tower so quickly. Dark Mago, he just grabbed himself a bottle. He's going to boot the travel back to the rest of his team. All right, never mind. He's farming up. I don't agree with this uh, Dark Mago play, but I guess he doesn't want to show himself at super low HP. And yeah. they will, at the very least, take his tier 3 tower without him. Yeah, I think that's the thing. They know that they can get the, the barracks here probably without Dark Mago. At least one. They're, they might not get both sets, but... Um, he just wants to farm up and, you know, head back to base. He'll be fine. Yeah. That's it. First barracks, or lane rather, will fall and just disengage right, your 17k gold lead now for the side of Thunder Predator. Good, I'll give it up. It was the correct play from Dark Mago. Uh, like, if they can get that rack down, there's no way they're getting a second even with him there. So, he is maximizing his farm. Now he's got a ceremonial robe as well as that Kai Assange completed on his way to a blink dagger. Not really a build you see all that often for the Shrak, but... Yeah, you do. I mean, you see it occasionally, but it's uh, it's, a, it's a really aggressive build. Yeah, Purge was yelling at me the other day uh, when I was playing less Shrak. He told me to build a goddamn blink dagger because that's what the pros do. It does <laughs> require more coordination to do yeah. something like a blink dagger on this hero. They do have a ward here that's scouting Yuma... He just doesn't have the blank though, so he can't actually get on top of this Monkey King to set up that Yule Scepter. And as a result, he might just get out. Very neat. Yeah, he's going to go and jump the bottom lane now. That's where Flea is, but he's never going to get on top of Flea. Flea's just too good. And not without a blank dagger anyway. And even then, uh, I think he'll probably be able to get the disengage with like a quick disruption. Uh, speaking of uh, Flea, he's got his own blank dagger queued up, so again. Oh no, he's in the danger zone. Angel's gonna find him with the. Nah, oh, he stopped kidding? walking. Please, too good. He's man. gonna find him with the blur. He was gonna find him with the blur. <laughs> like you said, man. Please. Oh. 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 The courier. No, flea. Oh, oh my god, he gets out. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Next hit was a bash too on that creep, which was even funnier. Yeah, yeah, that bash was prime. Uh, if he crits there, he dies as well. Ooh wee. Ooh wee, dude. Ooh wee. <laughs> All right. Looks like they're going to go for the Dark second Dark. lane of barracks here. Dark Mago on the bottom lane. Angel. Boots travel back down. Doesn't have boots travel. How, how the hell did he get down here? How did he get there? I don't know. Well, Monster jumping in with the Rolling Thunder. Just trying to zone them off the barracks, but you can't really even go that far forward. He does have a gem. And that is a pretty big cooldown. Uh, and I'm not sure how you Oh, he goes in the nullifier right on the money, but great save here from Flea. And they actually save the Oracle, though. It's not going to be enough. Dark Mago manages to bring him down. Yuma now, with this Wukong's command, they just walk out of it. Yeah, there's your cooldowns. Yeah, and look at Angel. Oh, no, he's stuck in the trees, Yuma! He can't go anywhere! He needs to BKB? He does, but Angel just doesn't care. Oh, no, what a disaster. And there it is, the Phantom Assassin getting really aggressive. Monster. Almost manages to hold Angel down in that fountain, but of course, Pandabu there with the quick fingers, able to save him. S pops the BKB, trying to take down the track with Dark Mago, tops himself back off. Two more buybacks, Elena Barracks going down in the middle of it all, and Angel just doesn't care. This man, he's out for blood. If he sees a hero come too far forward, he's going in. Yeah, there's no saving with the, the Fates Edict anymore either. The Blur is just able to spell that off him the moment he tries to use it on the Phantom Sass, and this is another reason for the eggs pickup. There's just no way to deal with Angel at this point. And again, he used everything uh, trying to defend the base in the bottom lane the first time. I mean, the Rolling Thunder needed like a perfect initiation, bouncing off the walls to be able to take a fight here. They're going to go for one last smoke. Monster's in. in here, but... Trying to find him, but Dark Mago, he's running across the trees, and here he comes, man. Angel once again blowing up this Oracle. The GG comes out. The targeting from the Phantom Assassin on point this game as he finishes 13 1 and 5, Neff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we knew this would be an issue. They could never find the jump onto this uh, PA Angel. They made the space for him. He ended up taking a couple of bad fights, but the PA didn't really go down. And 
need new hustlers. They never controlled enough the enemy side of the map to be able to contest this Phantom Assassin farm. So she got a BKB, uh, Battle Fury, both pretty early. And at that point, I think it was like sealed. There's nobody who's going to be able to fight against her. So Thunder Pride are showing why they're undefeated, why they came their runners up to just undying in the BTS Pro Series 7 and then champions of BTS Pro Series 8. And uh, you can take another quick game like that. You're going to get your wish on Panda Boo. You're going to be able to go sleep. <laughs> he wants to go sleep, man. I don't know. He's uh, it doesn't look very tired after that performance, but uh, yeah. yeah. And this is just a really solid game. T two hustlers did so some signs of life though in the in the mid game there. I mean, yeah, it looked solid. Like they were making a couple of really good plays. The comebacks potential was there, but it's just Angel. And we talked about it in the draft at the very beginning. You just how good this guy is. If you give him a good start, uh, he just takes over, and and he is a uh, a massive problem for the side of d2 hustlers this game like i said finishing up 13 and 1 um we'll see if he can do it again though what do you think nev can he can anyone stop uh, this guy <laughs> nobody can stop he's too good i mean if they their track records and anything to go uh off of here i don't think d2 hustlers will manage to take game two but we'll see uh they do have flea on the team man is an amazing voice he can call out uh where to go it's possible that he's picked apart this thunder predator strategy but you guys have to watch game number two to find out. Oh, true. All right, everyone, stay tuned for more here. We're going to go to a quick break as we'll return with the second game of our first series here today. It is D2 Hustlers versus Thunder Predator. See you in a bit.